maybe Smita, we can actually speak about um, this like you know phenomenon being connected when it comes also to life cycle assessment because I think like it really has something to do there that we have to be connected also across all the departments and um, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about um, you know how to work and um, what are the strategies there you know and also about the metrics um, you know that you use to measure Yes, yes. So, so in a typical life cycle assessment, um, we study, it depends, um, let's not get too technical, but you could study anything between 10 to 15 um, impact categories. That's what we call them. We call them impact categories or the KPIs. It's how you measure the impact of your product on the air, soil, and water. So for air, you would have the global warming potential, which everybody knows is the tons of CO2 that your product releases. Per, per ton of your product. So it's a relative term. Um, and then you have um, particulate matter, how much of particulate matter your product production process releases, um, how much of uh, ozone depletion potential your product has. So that's all about the air. And then you have water, you have uh, marine toxicity, freshwater toxicity. You also simply have uh, a KPI on how much of water your process consumes because that's a very important measure. And it's something that um, people often don't consider to be very important, but it is very important. And then soil toxicity and so on. So these are just the major categories that you look at in an LCA. Mm -hmm. um, although we do an LCA, a full LCA for all our products, um, and this is, and I say in general, um, when it comes to, to corporates, the focus is always on the climate change. It's always on the GWP. So GWP, also known as climate change, it's, it's how much of, of carbon emissions your product is, is giving out. But it's very important to look at the whole picture. So um, it's not only the, the climate change, it's also the water, it's also the soil, it's also biodiversity. Biodiversity is also a very important uh, aspect. So what we tend to do now at the moment as corporates is be like this. We only focus on the GWP. And really, it's high time we moved on and looked at it holistically. Because typically what happens is you start working on reducing your, your, your carbon emissions, but you end up creating a problem somewhere else. Uh -huh. it's, it's a classic um, case of any solution. As an example, we can um, look at solar panels, let's say. Okay, I'm not saying solar panels are bad, but solar panels do, do serve your purpose of reducing uh, emissions in the air but solar panels are also extremely resource intensive. You need a lot of materials for it. You need a lot of metals for it and metals which are rare. So you end up causing a lot of problems when it comes to uh, resource depletion and, and, and mining. And they also need a lot of water. And um, all of this releases toxic emissions into the water and soil. So if you're only looking at reducing emissions due to the use of solar panels, you are forgetting the big picture. And, and that is where we need to change um, how, we, how we approach the results of an LCA. And the LCA is a great tool. You can, you can get all of this information, but the important thing is how you use it uh, to, to guide your decision making. And then coming to your other question of, of how it works in, in, in cross departments, mm -hmm. it's, it's very challenging to, to put it very lightly because it involves talking to your production team um, gathering data. So you have to really gather production data from your plant. Um, you know, uh, how much of materials did you use? How much of energy did you use? How much of waste did your plant produce? Um, how much of product did you make? Where is your raw material coming from? Um, the transport of your raw material to your, to your, to your plant or, or factory. Um, and then we take all of this information and we put it into our software and then we calculate the, the emissions, um, the, the results. And then it's about putting all of this in a report. You actually have to detail everything about your process in this report, and then you have to get it certified by a third party company. So it's it's like an audit. It's like an audit of your, your product, the production of your product. It does not mean that you have to adhere to specific guidelines because that's not the, the idea here. Um, the idea is simply to report that this is what the impact of our product is. And we do this for several reasons. One is, of course, customers ask for this information. 
um, a lot of, uh, of OEMs and, and other chemical companies who use our products ask for this data, but it's also for ourselves because we have set targets to reduce our, our impacts. So these LCAs really help you find the problem areas or the hotspots, and then you can start working on reducing them. Mm, yeah, super, super interesting. Jay, <laughs> you want to say something? I feel <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's very interesting. Thank you for this insight, Smita. Um, the thing is just, if you describe completely right this, this over complexity that we humans have this carbon tunnel vision, it's like mm -hmm. having a horse with his blinkers. The thing is, what is important for you as part of this whole value chain, your considerations stop with your company. So you are producing something, it will be passed over to your clients, to your customers. Mm -hmm. This is when your reporting stops. Your clients are requesting the data because they can then work with it, mm -hmm. work maybe in a creative way to reduce their own reporting. For you, it would be as well important as part of this overall value chain that you get reverse data from your OEMs, from the other companies that you don't get right now. So that you have as well the full overview end to end. What happens afterwards? Because when you have a clean product that is then misused in a dirty way, you need to know this yes. because then you can start considering, okay, what if I change slightly my product that it starts to mitigate what happens afterwards? 